Hello everyone. Thank you for joining in the session. So, uh, uh, network disruptions. So, please do. Uh, I mean, uh, bear with me on that note, please. So, uh, yes, as Nivas stated, this webinar is going to be a partner exclusive webinar only for the partners from the regions of uh, European Union and the US states. So in this webinar, this is going to be a webinar both compromised, balanced by your presentation at the first half, and then we'll go on with the live demo, where we'll be exclusively talking about only the new features as well as the features that is favored for the partners. Okay, and uh, to start on with, I just want to give you a uh, start on with a happy note. So this uh, season, like the season for fall for the uh, year of 2021, uh, G2 Crowd has named us to be the leaders and the, uh, they, have, uh, they have marked us to be the leaders for this uh, 2021 uh, fall season. So this is one of the greatest uh, or I could say it as a good achievement from our side, from the whole team of Wembu. So it is all because of you all partners. So thank you so much from our side on behalf of Wembu as well. So uh, yes. So this webinar on what's new in Wembu BDR Suite version 5.0. This uh, I could say this is the long-awaited uh, version which we have been working for long, and uh, we have brought up so much of features based on the feedbacks that we received for the uh, long time, and mostly uh, I believe this version as from this version you'll have all the features that favors mostly for the uh, partners of Rainbow. So, yes. So, uh, I, I, uh, I mean, I have, I see the well-known partners list who is joined as an attendees and I also see some of the new faces who have joined in or part, uh, uh, they have signed up as a new partners of Rainbow. So, just for them, on a traditional note, we'll just uh, go with the introduction about uh, Wembu and then we'll continue with the further thoughts. Yes, Wembu backup and disaster recovery. We, as we have uh, more than a decade and a half years of experience in this backup and disaster recovery market, we have uh, uh, catered this product based on the requirements of the market and we are well known or the, maybe I can put it in the term as leaders of this market as of now. So we have a food steps in 100 plus countries with 60,000 plus businesses are using a product with 4,000 plus partners support worldwide. And uh, the, uh, with a pride, I also want to introduce regarding the Wembu technology partnership, where we have partnered with the VMware till the Harvard packet. We are also partnering with NetApp for the future releases, future uh, fe feature that is going to be released uh, in our upcoming releases of Wembu. So on that note, now to the Wembu BDR Suite product overview. Wembu has its one flagship product, which all of you knows, but uh, this for the new attendees who have joined in, uh, and they are the new ones who have signed in for Wembu. So for them, this Wembu BDR Suite is a flagship product of Wembu, which is a one complete package, which encapsulates many product features within it. So with that, you can back up your virtual environment you can take a backup for your physical uh, machines, that is Windows machines. Then your, you can back up your cloud workloads as well as your SaaS applications and a granular level of backup for both your servers, that is your file servers, endpoints and applications together. So all these are catered within one backup solution. When I say about the backup for virtual environment, I'm actually referring to the backup and replication for VMware and Hyper-V. And when I'm uh, mentioning about the physical uh, Windows backup, I'm referring to the disk image level backup. The AWS is a workload of EC2 instance that you could take a backup of. And then the SaaS applications is Microsoft 365 and Google Workspace, uh, which has recently been renamed as Microsoft 365. Initially, it was Microsoft Office 365 and G Suite. Now it's renamed with an enhancement which is coming forward. So, uh, and we have catered uh, to uh, in a different uh, three setup that is the file servers, the backup for endpoints, and then the backup for applications all together. 
So this at uh, this backup for uh, file servers, endpoints, and applications are going through a client to server model, where you will be having a separate client to take the backup and send it to the server. So this is the Vimbo Media Suite as a traditional one, and I've just explained you regarding the backups, but regarding the disaster recovery part, that's we call it as offsite copy or the DR copy, where you can have a secondary copy of your backup data. In another uh, in another location that can either be your secondary data center, uh, whether it is on-prem or even in your own cloud for, uh, uh, instance. And then we also have for those who couldn't afford for having a secondary data center, then we have something called as Bainbook Cloud DR, which has been available for a long time. And uh, yes, now as a derivative during this pandemic, we just came up with an idea that is Wimbo Cloud BDR Suite. This is mostly for the SMBs and for the reach of the market who, who, who are the individual users. So they who can't afford to have a separate backup uh, server at their environment, they can use this uh, option like a Wimbo Cloud BDR Suite, which is a derivative from Wimbo BDR Suite ideology. So we have the backup for, it's more of a similar type of backups where you will backup the data from your target machine, you'll just back up the data and send the data directly to Wimbo Cloud. Previously, you have to sign up for this Wimbo Cloud. So once you back up your data directly to Wimbo Cloud, you will have this data availability where you can restore them from anywhere at any time. So as of now, since it's a new, uh, you know, it's new introduction, as of now, uh, we have introduced uh, or made available the features for the file servers, endpoints, and applications. That is the cloud backup for these. Then cloud backup for AWS EC2 instance. Cloud backup for your SaaS applications like Microsoft 365 and Google Workspace are available now. We are also trying to bring up the features for VMware backup, Hyper-V, and Microsoft Windows. Soon, that will also be available. These uh, cloud media suite is more like for individual users where I could uh, even put it in a word like uh, for uh, students, for uh, the home workers who can just uh, back up their data to if they want to secure the data, the individual users, they can just back up the data and put it in Bamboo Cloud. That's it. Uh, yeah. So this is regarding the product lineup for you. And now to the point that is what's new in the Bamboo BDR Suite version 5.0. So as I told you, like uh, based on the feedbacks which we gained all, uh, I mean, uh, throughout the seasons, so we have designed this version 5.0. But I can assure you that from the version 5.0, you will see a lot more of new features that is of enterprise class grade coming at a nominal rate for you. So in this uh, version 5.0, we have introduced some of the backup features, backup support features that is new. Like uh, initially, we did have uh, a backup for Microsoft Office 365, which we recently named it, renamed it as Microsoft 365 Back. So in thus, we have included the backup uh, for the SharePoint Online and the backup for Microsoft Teams. So these two are uh, coming under, it's more of a subcategory that is coming under the Microsoft 365 Backup, that is your SaaS backup set. And, uh, Previously, the G Suite backup of uh, Wimbo Media, we have uh, enriched the product now. So with all the new features, so now this Google Workspace backup is being introduced directly into the Media backup server itself. And then uh, uh, previously, you had an uh, agent to take a backup of your AW. AWS EC2 instance, but now we have introduced directly. Uh, we have introduced this directly into the Vimbo Media console itself. So with this, you all you have to do is just add the EC2 instance uh, um, uh, account to your Media backup server. So with that, you can backup your instances from anywhere at any time. And all that go. Now, uh, now we are going to see about the new features that we have introduced in the Wimbo BDR Suite version 5.0. So regarding the features, I could say it as a rotated drives as a storage. So if um, this, maybe like I can uh, give an explanation about this during my live demo, but just take it, this rotated drive as storage has been a, a long time uh, feedback. So that has been a feature request 
and uh, we have taken it up in this uh, version 5.0 where you uh, can rotate your drives at a regular intervals so that you can have your data to be splitted and stored so that is one of the uh, rotated drive option that we have and uh, hypo v vm replication has been newly introduced in this version 5.0 to replicate or fail over and undo fail over your uh, uh, replicated data of your hypo v virtual environment and then you have the parallel vm or disk processing so in one particular backup job you can parallelly uh, configure your vm uh, vms that you can take a backup at uh, a, a parallel manner on a concurrent manner so that you don't miss out on the backups and it doesn't get delayed and multi host backup support i could uh, i mean uh, this for this i could say it as in one particular backup job you can involve two or three backup hosts to take a backup okay so that is what your multiple host backup support is all about and backup job template is a if you have a predefined sla so instead of each and every time adding on uh, uh, with a set of frequencies and the frequency set of uh, you know schedulings then we have brought in this template type where you can predefine your sla's with that you can configure your backups it's all in an easy step and then a synthetic full backup so you can merge your full backup along with your uh, along with its respective incrementals within the backup repository using the synthetic full backup option so this will cut short your need for additional full backups in a longer run and you equally it can store your i mean you can save your space of your storage as well you have advanced gfs retention so we i would say that we have enhanced this gfs retention where you will have this grandfather father son type of retention both for your full backups that is your centric full as well as your uh, uh, additional full backups and even for your uh, incremental backups and at last uh, we have this instant boot live migration this is more of a recovery option i would say uh, I, i could even put it as term as a disaster type of recovery because instant boot option is nothing but you, you any of your data that you're trying to take a backup like an image level backup you can instantly boot that as a virtual machine on a vmware hyper v or kvm environment if you're using a linux media you can uh, boot it on a kvm environment for uh, it was just a mount process a mount and boot process so we, the backup data the image data will be mounted and you can do the changes when you whenever you meet with a disaster you can bo- boot it up as a ready state vm and make your changes now in order to make that as a permanent um, a virtual machine independent of the ties uh, that it has with the vmware media suite so we have brought in this instant boot live migration option where you can lively migrate that as a permanent virtual machine and moreover it is also an independent virtual machine so that whatever the changes that you make you will be having that as a virtual machine with all the changes running as a production machine itself okay that's the instant boot live migration for you and uh, the enhancements as i told you like uh, uh, this version 5.0 had a lot of enhancements that we made so from the ui and the ux of the uh, com- complete backup server console that you're going to see and moreover we have initially we had this universal tool explorer for all your applications such as microsoft applications to be granularly restored so for that we have uh, removed the tool and we have brought that or i could say it as we have integrated that application item tool directly into a web gui that is web gui itself and um, we have enhanced this uh, varet left of feature initially we had it only for the file uh, file and application level backups now we have extended it even for the image level backups so whenever you meet with a network disruptions you can continue with the backups from where you have resumed okay and then multiple ten- uh, tenancy support i would say like uh, this is a group management or which is mostly suited for the partners so we have brought in this compre- uh, comprehensive multi multi tenancy support directly into the bdia backup server itself so you you don't have to do all your work around which we had initially it's all made easy and direct and vembo portal so uh, 
lot of management of licenses as well as the addition of new customers under a SP or adding a, a customer under a, and as well as a SP under a reseller, all these has been uh, um, you know a, a workaround step that we had initially. But now with the enhanced uh, Wimbo portal UI and US, you can all do it directly from the portal itself and the application of licenses and the simplification of license application and administration has been made easier in this version 5.0. And then we have this backup window settings. So uh, for this is more for the enterprise class, I would say, but uh, it was an enterprise class feature, but with Bamboo, it is now available for all. So you can restrict your backup jobs to run from particular time to time. So with this backup window will help you with that. And this backup window, initially we had it on a global level. Now it is even available for a particular backup job level as well. Okay. And then backup throttling support for all the backups for a preferred network without uh, causing any traffic in your networkers. I mean, networking. And then we have this file level restore for dynamic disk backups. So, uh, backup of dynamic disk though we had it in the few, uh, previous uh, versions we did have a disk uh, mount option only available but in this version we have introduced even the file level restore for the dynamic disk backups of windows microsoft windows and then we have this uh, compression and encryption to be disabled for the backups if you are using any storage appliances of uh, nas or uh, whatever then you can use this disable compression and encryption if that particular appliance storage appliance has its inbuilt encryption and compression option so in that case the backup server will um, you can disable it and uh, the backup server will give you the raw backup data and your appliance will do all the compression and encryption of backups for you so this is all the enhancements that we have and i'm going to stop the presentation over here now Whatever I've explained uh, so far, whatever I've uh, just given you an intro so far, we'll be seeing that in a live demo. So I'm just moving on to my OVM. Just I hope uh, everyone is able to view my screen. So as you all know, um, the version 5.0, we have released the RC build in our website. So you can just log into our website like wembu.com or post the session, you will be redirected to our website automatically. So in that website, when Wimbo.com, you at the right hand corner, you will have this top corner, you will have this download icon where you have the RC build available. Soon, uh, maybe in a couple of days, we are at the edge of releasing our general availability build also. So the version 5.0 general availability will be available for both Windows and Linux operating systems in a couple of uh, days from now. So uh, once that is released, I believe all your respective account managers will be dropping you a mail with the release note. So yes, so the build which I have installed now is a preview version of the GA build. So this is version 5.0. I've installed this build in my uh, Windows machine, a server machine, obviously. So uh, being a backup server from now, uh, we would recommend to have a dedicated backup server in your environment, which either could be a Windows backup server or a Linux. If you are going to use a Linux, uh, probably you could go with your 18.04 uh, LTS of Ubuntu and 20.04 LTS of Ubuntu. Only two versions of Ubuntu are supported now. And uh, make sure you have a minimum RAM memory support of uh, 8 GB and uh, recommended would be the 16 GB and it is completely based on your data that you're trying to take a back. Okay, so uh, when I log in, I um, this is a complete new version of version 5.0. So when I log in with uh, my default username and password, I mean, uh, previously, uh, if all the partners would be known, like uh, we did have this uh, blue and white matchup. So now we have brought it a very uh, modern and very elegant so that you can have a good view of things so yeah this is my demo setup i've already uh, given in my details so now we'll see what all the features that we have added in i'm not much deep into the feature but still i'll just give you i try to give you an overview of what we have done so far 
so that we can make this uh, webinar to be crisp. So here, the alignment of the tabs has been given. So all, as I told you, all the backups uh, which we had it initially separate in a separate uh, client agent has been moved on to an complete backup server window that is a single server window so where, I can, where you can click on vmware hyper v or windows to take your image level backups and for aws you can just click on this tab to configure your aws backups ec2 instance backup specifically and uh, the SaaS application backups of Microsoft 365 and Google Workspace have been added in this tab. And your file servers and endpoints and application backup, though it is a client-based backup, but you can uh, you, mean, you, mean you can manage the client as well as the restore can be done from the server itself, from the VDA backup server itself. So this is what uh, you can do that do in this section. So now moving on to the initial part. So uh, once you log in. Yeah, the main part is you have to uh, configure your VDA uh, storage, storage for your VDA server, that is your backup repository. So we have added that under the VDA infrastructure. If you go for backup repository, you have the block storage. We actually had introduced this object storage like uh, your S3 compatible devices or your cloud storage um, devices can be added on to this object storage. But due to some uh, test restrictions, we have um, we are not into, uh, we are not uh, bringing this up live for this version 5.0, but sure, in one of our releases after our version 5.0 GA, we'll be uh, bringing this feature live. Okay, so as of now, we have this block storage. In this block storage, uh, you just all, all you just have to do is just click on create new block storage repository, where you will have the simple option a simple type of repository option the scale out repository option and disk rotation option the disk rotation is the one which i've uh, been uh, talking about but this disk uh, rotation option is not supported for your SaaS applications and even uh, you don't have this for your offsite uh, replication also okay so both for your SaaS applications like microsoft 365 and google workspace backup that is a limitation we have not introduced that is this we, uh, disk rotation is not supported for those SaaS application backup. Whereas in scale out, when you choose in scale out, you you can uh, pool in multiple storage volumes together and create a backup repository. Okay, that's a scale out repository. And even uh, after you uh, creating the backup repository, if uh, you see that your repository is getting filled up, you can click on the action button and edit the repository by adding a new volume at any point of time uh, in your uh, during your usage and the simple repository is a, a single uh, one set, one step build where it is restricted to that particular space for example uh, if the, i'm going to choose only e drive uh, i'll be only using within the total space of 365.49 gb okay so i can't uh, pull in multiple volumes together to, uh, as you could see in a uh, scale out repository. So this is more of a fixed type. And whereas in scale out, you can keep on expanding it whenever your storage gets filled. And then uh, for all the network drive users, more like a uh, NAS drive and SAN drive. So you can add your network drives to this add network drive as storage volume option, read through the important recommendations. You can just uh, check on this box after you understand what you're uh, read through then you can just add the drive path of that network drive the drive name it should be a single letter either like uh, a b uh, e g or whatever, whatever it's a single drive name letter and then you can add the username and password for the network drives if you have any and then you can save it once you save it that particular uh, network drive like nas drive or san drive that you have added will be uh, projected here as a volume storage volume with that particular drive letter so you can choose that also along with the local drive volumes <coughs> excuse me and then you can create your backup repository so that is that is a type of uh you know uh, adding your nas drive or sand drive to the uh media backup server as your storage and as i told you like uh, if you are using a storage appliance so you can, uh, if that storage appliance is capable enough to have its own compression and encryption, then you can 
disable the compression and encryption by clicking on this option okay so the software based compression and encryption done by the Wembo will be disabled so uh, we'll be giving the data as a raw data in the storage repository of yours that is your uh, storage appliance in this case so the storage appliance will do the rest of the process of compression and encryption for you so this is one of the main features that we have in the backup repository end and uh, to discuss on the uh, media infrastructure now uh, the settings of a uh, proxy that is if you uh, you are having a separate network proxy then you can add your web proxy through this option through in this under this settings icon and then uh, you have the data sources initially we had all these coupled up under one single uh, version, uh, one single tab called backup now uh, we have uh, separated that where you'll be adding all your you know uh, your data sources under this data source section and the backup part will be done by configuring uh, the data um, by configuring your backup job by taking in the data sources that you have added in this under this data sources section so here for example if you want to add on this uh, vmware or vsphere you can just click on this esxi or vcenter for that and if you want to have a backup proxy of your vmware we have this backup for uh, proxy settings also included in that and the same for Hyper-V, if you are adding for Hyper-V, you can add for Hyper-V cluster, Hyper-V servers, uh, that is a standalone service, I'm sorry. And here you can even have for SMB servers for all your file uh, file transaction detail. And then for disk image level backup, you can just click on add Microsoft Windows. Uh, you can click on this add Microsoft Windows detail, give the IP address or DNS name. This is, this is more of a similar kind that you could even see for VMware and Hyper-V uh, data sources while you add in so you can just add your IP, uh, IP address or the DNS name of the machine target machine that you want to take a backup and then you can give the credentials for example you can add the credentials here with the username and password which is of administrator privilege and save it <coughs> excuse me once you save it the credentials will be listed down under this section where you can select on that particular credential and you can save this uh, IP address. Once you add that IP address, it will be listed down under this, this section. Okay. So um, this is uh, this is where you will be adding all your details, that is your data sources. And for the configuration of backup, you have to click on the backup uh, uh, tab, click on configure backup. And here you can configure your backup for your VMware, Hyper-V and Windows machines. Okay. So um, now, for example, regarding the backup job template, which I was talking to you before, so you can configure your backup job template using this uh, section, like manage backup job template. You can create a new backup job template. So this is more of a predefined SLAs where you can choose of which template type that you're going for. So we only have three templates type that is only for the image level backup that is restrained as of now. That is for VMware, Hyper-V and Microsoft Windows. So you can choose any one of that, create a backup job template, and uh, you can set that repository, uh, whichever the repository that you want this template to put your, I mean, deposit your backup data. So if you want to add a new backup repository from here, you can add it by clicking on this add backup repository option. Once done, uh, if you have an existing uh, repository already, you can just click on using the existing one and you can create a new repository okay so uh yeah for example if i uh, keep on giving a data for example uh, maybe like i can just add it for my vmware on this note so here is my disk exclusion part uh, so if uh, if i'm adding a host if i'm uh, taking a complete uh, backup or if i want to typically uh, rule out any particular disk, then I can use this disk exclusion to filter out that requirement. And then the guest processing. So if you're using any applications uh, of Microsoft to make sure that your applications are consistent while taking a backup, while taking a snap, then you can use this option. You can set this predefined. And then uh, that goes for VMware queasing also. So if you're using a guest processing, please make sure that you enable this VMware queasing. And then your backup frequency 
So uh, uh, initially we had, I believe we had uh, only a restricted number of features, but in backup frequency, you can just schedule your backup at one time manually. You can run it from every 15 hours. You can run it on a daily basis, even on daily basis, how, uh, how many times you want to run. You can even set that up either within uh, 24 hours. You can set that uh, either if you want to run it on two times or three times, you can go on with a maximum of up to five. And then you have the weekly uh, backup and then you have the monthly backup and for general backups about that you're configuring to this uh, configure backup section there is an option called after a backup job so um, after completing a backup job you can set this option uh, like uh, schedule to run the backup after this particular backup job so once the previous backup job gets over you will automatically start with this uh, uh, newly configured backup without any um, um, sh predefined set and then you have the synthetic full backup option so uh, if you want you can enable it so that as I told you you can have uh, based on your scheduling over here this synthetic full backup also varies okay so you will have a weekly you can run this synthetic full backup on a weekly monthly and daily basis also okay so once you set this up you can set up your start time and on that start time within the backup repository you will as i told you you will have the full backup will get merged itself with the incrementals without uh, the need for an additional full backup at times okay so this is the centric full for you an additional full backup is if in need or like if you're in need of an additional full backup then you can go for so all these requirements are directly, um, I mean, the UI is more legible for you. So that gives you more of the detail when you, whenever you have a doubt of this feature you can just click on this uh, question icon or just hover. You don't have to click. You can just hover over this question icon that will give you the reason for uh, having this Cindric full backup into the session. Okay. So, uh, yeah, and, and last you have this advanced schedule settings. So where you can set, as I told you, the backup uh, window for individual backup jobs. So you can either go with the global settings or you can use your custom settings to schedule this backup. So when you choose a custom settings, it is only for this particular backup job. You make sure that you don't run the backups from this start time till this end time on all days or any particular day together. Okay. And uh, there's also an option called um, backup job expiry so uh, you can set a expiry time for this particular backup job so uh, within that time for example i'm just configuring this in 2021 and i want this particular backup job to be expired on the next year correctly at the, uh, this particular time so i can set it up to expire the day, uh, backup job by october 6 uh, uh, 2022 so automatically on that particular date this particular backup job will lose its power and no further schedules of the backup will be um, forwarded so this is what you have in the uh, scheduling part and then the next is our uh, retention so uh, if this is left disabled you will have all the versions of the backup data that whatever you're going to take to be residing in your backup repository to have a limit or to retain a particular type of backups or uh, the limit or the versions of the backup then you can enable this option so when you enable there's a basic retention and gfs retention so if you're using the basic retention obviously you can set it up to the number of triple nine versions backup versions you can store up to a maximum of triple nine backup versions or you can specifically uh, keep something below that okay yeah this is for triple nine versions of backup uh, backup version triple nine backup versions and uh, here at the bottom i have this gfs retention for my full backups so the grandfather father son retention if i want to keep it uh, this actually this retention is uh is directly uh, related to the schedule part if I have chosen a monthly schedule, if I'm going to choose it for every to run every few hours, then I'll get to see to keep my data on number of days to retain also. 
okay so this uh, um, gfs for full backups you can re retain it for on weekly copies you can retain it for monthly copies you can retain it for quarterly as well as for uh, yearly basis so this is only for the full backups and for the gfs retention for incrementals is also newly added so when you choose this only for the incremental data you can retain them for a longer years so that goes to weekly monthly quarterly and yearly based on the schedule that you are choosing it previously and the next part is my encryption part so uh, i can make sure that my data is encrypted with aes 256 bit algorithm so no uh, no worries on that so when i enable this encryption a software based encryption will be enabled where you have two options here either you can go with the system generated encryption key or you can use your custom generated encryption key. so if you're going to choose this custom generated one so you will be asked to add your um, encryption key that is more like a password and make sure you don't forget this key because once you forget you won't be able to restore your backup data you can't uh, delete this backup job from the backup server or edit this backup job so make sure uh, you don't forget this uh, um, password of your custom custom encrypted key okay i'm sorry i'm just uh, demo person i'm just uh, disabling it and for advanced settings only for vmware you will have this proxy if uh, whereas for the hyper v and microsoft windows you won't be having this proxy enabled but soon we'll be bringing in that proxy or uh, availability also for all other backup jobs like microsoft hyper v and microsoft windows backup so at last is your review page so you can review all the details that you have uh, configured previously and you can save the backup job so what i have shown you now is just a template but this is the actual process that even you will you will be going through in this configuring a backup job okay now uh yes if not to it and now to the backup section under the backup section we have this configure backup settings there are some settings that we have recently included like the concurrent backups so that uh, for example uh, if there are two or three different types of backup jobs that you are configured and you, meanwhile you want to run those backup jobs parallelly you can use this concurrent backups option and data compression level we had it in the back end previously now we have brought it directly so in this you can set your compression level from low optimal to high by default it will be in optimal now i have moved into high so based on your requirement you can use this option and uh, next is your backup window this is what i was telling like the global uh, backup window so what we seen previously for the individual backup job you can set a backup window but if you want to go with the global settings you can set up your time over here for this backup window and bandwidth throttling so generally the bandwidth throttling is enabled uh, you know for all your backup jobs so this uh, type of global setup where you can enable you can just click on edit enable and you can choose from when to when you want to throttle the bandwidth in order to uh, um, cut short on your network trafficking okay while at your peak hours you can use this option and at last i have my data integrity so uh, this is one of the important option this is a three tier verification so every tw 24 hours by default you will have your backup data to be uh, mounted over the um, virtual environment and then it will be booted up and the boot screen of the data will be taken a screenshot and it will be added to your reports so that is to verify that the data's integrity is all good so before you restore you go on with the restore it's more like a sandbox type you can uh, check the uh, 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 I mean, integrity of the data and then you can proceed by your restore process so this is what it is and uh, you can even uh, choose on how many days you can keep it as a interval you can run it on uh, every one day two days or up to a week of interval times okay so that's what your backup job uh, backup data integrity is all about and now about the vm replication so uh, again here you will be configuring the replication part from here but the added source will be in the data source section for example if i'm adding a vmware replication so when i click on vmware vsphere 
I have already the data to be added because I have added the data and the data source section. Uh, added the sources in the data source section. So with this, I can start configuring my replication. So uh, previously we had the replication only for VMware vSphere. Now we have introduced even for Microsoft Hyper-V, and you can fail over and fail back the data from this from uh, this section. You can just click on fail over and fail back, where you can click on restore where you can uh, for vmware you will have the failover once you choose a failover the passive state of the replicated vm will be brought into an active state at the targeted host okay and uh, after your failover is done you can then you will have this option to be enabled where you can undo the failover or you can permanent the failover or you can fail back the failover that you have made so this uh, undo failover will not include the changes. The permanent failover will include the changes and then fail back will just bring back along with the changes to the original host. Okay. So uh, you, uh, once a fail back is enabled, you will have this option also to be available. That is finalize fail back option where you can choose on undo fail back, uh, commit the fail back options. Okay. And with this, uh, you also have this file level recovery available. So this is for your VMware replication restore part. And uh, to have a failover and fail box for Hyper-V, you only have two options. That is either you can fail over or undo failover your um, undo your failover that you have made during your times of disaster. Only these two parts are available for VM replications. And uh, we have this tape uh, archive. So if you're having a tape library with this LTO generation three and above, then you can uh, use that as your tape library using this add tape server as an option. So uh, we have a uh, restriction here. You can only add your auto loaded one and not just standalone one, which we support as of now. And the recovery part, in the, you can just click on the restore section in the restore backup data. You can see uh, the backup data and backup jobs will be listed down. So under this restore section, you can click on restore section and you can recover the data of two hosts together. If you have multi, uh, if you add multiple hosts, you can recover the data of the two hosts together or any single particular host you can restore. So you will have or uh, this is what I was trying to say. The granular recovery for all your application items is being included directly in the backup server itself. Okay. We previously, we were using a tool called Universal Explorer, but now it is directly into this backup server itself. So, yeah. So, this is what we have for your, um, you know, uh, this recovery section. Of, for example, if I have uh, in this, we have also enhanced something like original size and compressed size is also described here. So original size actually uh, points to the exact amount of backup data that have been taken. And the compressed size is the uh, size that is stored at your back storage repository. Okay, that is what it is shown here. So for this, I believe uh, I have taken a backup. Sorry, I have already taken a backup of my VMware with two of my virtual machines. Yeah, so uh, here, this is one complete uh, host which has two virtual machines within it. So I can choose the two together. Yeah. I can choose two of my virtual machines together and click on the restore type, choose on the restore type to restore my data, okay? I think pretty much I've explained over the backup part under this VMware and Hyper-V windows. Now moving on to the AWS section. And uh, yeah, I've also uh, forget to uh, include like in the report section. So we have included the backup uh, job reports. Uh, we have enhanced the report details so that you get to see all the details uh, brief uh, that would brief you about all the backend process that has happened at the uh, backend. So for example, the recent job schedule. So whatever the sh jobs that I've taken, I can even download it as a, you know, uh, as a report for my internal audit purpose. 
or I can set it uh, through an email as an email notification. So this is my report. So all the incremental, uh, this is an incremental backup schedule type. So all those details will be briefed over here where the original size of the backup and the compressed size of the backup is also shown here. The size reduction detail is also present here. And you know, the total size is being mentioned over here. The, the original size of the backup job along with the compressed size of the backup job in your storage repository. The sizes which is shown is uh, shown here is for the incremental backup alone. Okay, so all the success uh, details and even the failure details, if we have any, we have the KB also integrated into it. So the KB links will give you more of the detail about why there was a failure. For example, I see that there is a failure over here. So here you could see like why the uh, failure has happened. We have given you a much of a detail over here with an error code. Okay. So uh, these are the reports. And here, uh, even for data retention, we have marked out the retention type over here, where you can see all the retention details shown up in this page. You have the data recovery report, offsite DR copy, and the data integrity report. This is what I was talking to you under this backup data integrity. So automatically, this process is done. Uh, so where the boot screen will be taken as snap, and it will be shown in the report section. So this actually gives me an acknowledgement or I could say I take it as a confirmation that the data is all good so that I can proceed with my restore further. Yeah. And the management section. So here is your uh, adding of license and all those details. So you can you have to sign up with your Bamboo portal account and go further with the licensing. And on the management section, you have something called as groups. This is where your multi-tenancy lies in. For most of the service provider, I think this option will be useful. So you can create a group with the entities that is required. So you can just create a back a group name with the email address and you can give them the, I mean, I have already uh, created one. So maybe like I can show you that with an edit option. So you can just give a group name with an email address and then you can set the web access. So here you can add the users whether with a full access privilege or the read only privilege. If the user gets a full access privilege, he uh, with whatever the uh, types of entity that you're going to choose, either the backup job or the client job or client completely that you're going to choose, he'll be able to restore that only at a file or folder level. Okay. Whereas the read only privilege will not have the restore option. He is just, he can see what has been taken a backup and what uh, you can also check on the reports okay so to the users you just have to give this particular username and then their particular password okay so with that you can uh, add the uh, create a group and add the users accordingly and then entities so here there are two types either i could go with the media client or backup level entity or i can use my vm level entity okay if it is going to be the vm level Obviously, I'll be choosing one particular uh, 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 virtual machine or a group of virtual machines together for my restore. So this is my backup server. So I'm choosing this backup server and all the backup jobs under this backup server is also selected as of now. And this is my client. Uh, this is my, uh, you know, the file and application backup client that I've used. And this is also a client. Okay. So these, all these three together, I've created a group. So with this group, I'll be able to manage my, uh, I mean, uh, I'll be able to share my details so that uh, there is a restriction for the users, whoever is going to use this um, backup server. Okay. And then BDI uses is actually a, like, uh, you'll have, be having uh, administrator privilege, but for other users, you can give them the required, um, you know, access. So whichever is required, either they can go with the full access or read only access. So those are the things, uh, gentle things that you could see under the VMware or Hyper-V Windows section. And regarding the AWS, so uh, this AWS, again, you can add your AWS account under this data sources, that is add AWS accounts, and then you can configure your backup job directly. So already there's an AWS account uh, added so I'm not going to 
add a new one now so while configuring a backup job so this is how it is so here i'm going to choose which region uh, is specific so uh, for example if i'm going to choose on uh, asia pacific so add an it will list down all the instances under that um yeah all the instances under this asia pacific region so okay so under this region it will list down all the uh, um, instance ec2 instances that could either be your windows or linux either it is protected or unprotected it will list down all the details you can select that and you can configure them to be uh, to be taken as a backup okay so for this make sure your then you are signed up with yeah so these are the instances of mine running in different regions so i can choose any particular instance or together i can choose multiple instances okay and here is my application aware if that instance is running any application aware settings then you can enable this for that instance or uh, the pre or post scripts will also be enabled can be enabled for this section and then i can configure my backup okay so this is for my aws backup all together and uh, microsoft 365 and google workspace for this similarly you have to add your data sources of either your microsoft 365 or your google workspace organization together and then with that you can configure the backup jobs for if i'm uh, i've already that added the data source as you could see you can configure the backup job for the sharepoint teams or whatever so i can either go with the entire organization backup or i can choose any particular objects i can go with the user mailbox group mailbox mailbox sharepoint sites or teams okay so i can choose this accordingly and i can configure the rest of the backup part so yes and file servers and endpoints obviously for this as i told you this is through a client agent so under the data source section you can see this download bdr client so using this you can download the bdr client from this um required bdr client for your uh, machine you can install that on the machine and the client will back up the data and it will send it to the backup server and it the backup server gets to store the data with the storage repository added to it okay by default it will go to the default repository of uh, uh, to store all your data so whatever the data is that um, whatever the backup jobs that you're configured through a client you can list all them in this list backup section okay so this is a backup job that i've configured this is a registry backup job that i've configured from one of my client that is 103.76 and this is another backup job from my desktop that is my windows 10 desktop so all these are listed here so uh, i can have my option to recover the data that's the privilege that i have so i can uh, restore the data from my backup server end or i can restore the data from my client end also okay so these are the details that we have under this file servers so um, i pretty much have uh, come to the end of this uh, you know the product of vembu bdr suite and uh, regarding the cloud bdr suite that's the one so you can just log in with um, the cloud bdr suite you can just sign up for the cloud bdr suite so once you sign up uh, you have to uh, give in your email id and uh, password for that so uh, this vembu bdr suite is similar here so here also you will be having this uh, file servers endpoints and application and microsoft office 365 and g suite details available okay here you can add the domain and configure your backups accordingly and for this file servers endpoints and application you have to download the client you can just click on add new client machines by you can download this client um, agent and install it on your targeted machine and that uh, from the client you can configure the backup and that will be stored in this cloud uh, bdr suite for you okay that's the general availability over here so in recovery uh, section you have all the details that you can uh, look into so whatever you have taken a backup all those uh, backup details will be available here you can restore it based on the client you can search and only for that particular client you can restore that data
okay and you have the reports for all the session over here soon we'll be uh, uh, making this vmware hyper v and windows linux also available in this uh, for this cloud bdr suite yeah uh, so this is up for your cloud bdr suite now now to the vembo portal account so um, for vembo portal account i'm just logging in here so as a service provider i get to see this newly enhanced uh, you know the portal account so in this i'm not going to uh, tell a deep on things but i'm going to touch only on the license part so for the license okay so the, for the license here you can man uh, the service provider gets a privilege to buy the license free or in hand okay so you can buy the license and keep it by itself so you can choose to which uh, customer he has to apply the license for so here i've already had a license i've bought a license here so i can allot the license to particular server of my uh, customer so i can choose a customer from this section so whichever the customer has been under me i can choose this customer and to which office backup server that i'm going to add so i can add that detail over here okay yeah i can choose one of my customer i'm going to add this and i can allot the license to that customer so what happens is the license which i've bought generally can get allotted to that particular customer so even the uh, service provider gets a privilege to add um, you can buy the licenses and create a pool of the license and from the pool he can allot the licenses to each of his customers whichever he feels that it could go with so yeah so he, uh, if he is going to uh, choose with the assign with a backup server he can do that so by choosing the backup server and assign the license from this assign section and he can manage all the licenses from this license management detail by choosing for one particular server and you could see what all has been assigned and what not has been assigned okay unassigned license details is also shown here and the cloud plan will also be shown here so this, since it is a demo account i'm not showing all those details over here so this is for my service provider whereas uh for the resellers for the reseller account i'll just log in as a reseller so for the reseller when i have a license to be allocated i can just purchase a license and i can allot the license for a service provider or a customer i can choose that through this allot license section okay using that allot license check uh, section i can choose that maybe i try showing it and this uh, just give me a minute so this is a reseller's account so the dashboard gives you all the detail with the credit privileges whatever they have so here in this license section i'm just going only to the license section so here is the allocations so i can choose uh, like can select a backup server on prem before that i have to purchase the license that the license buying can be done over here so here i can choose the license here is a detail like a lot license to the sp or customer i can choose this option so it here it asks me in this section uh, page it asks me either to go and allot this particular license for the customer i can uh, this gives me a list of customer details or to the particular service provider it gives me the service provider details so based on that how many units that you have you can allot that to that sp or the customer and once allotted you can manage that licenses from this section so this will give you an overview of all the licenses that has been done so total customers and total uh, i mean all those detail of the licenses and the service provider details is all sectioned here so where you can see through what all has been assigned and what all has been unassigned from this reseller account itself okay so but um, regarding the adding of customers and service provider under a reseller account it's all the old method where you can just uh, click on add service provider and add the detail uh, or you can just click on add customer and add the detail okay so the buying privileges that you could give it for your customer and all our allocation of discounts is all done through this section okay fine so yes pretty much this is what your vembo bdr suite is all about so now uh, 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 version 5.0 is all about this is what your version 5.0 is all about now back to the section that we have stopped previously just give me a minute
I just want to uh, give you a brief about uh, what we have for the future. That is, uh, what all the features that we have in our pocket for the future after a version 5.0 GA release, which is set to happen in a couple of days from now. So this is for the BDR version 5.1. After a 5.0 GA release, we'll be releasing it by um, oh, within a time uh, period of gap. So here we have this prioritized VM backup order. So this is one of uh, an important feature. So where a, a person can prioritize which VM should be backed up. So he can prioritize even on the critical VMs that he's trying to take a backup through a uh, backup job. He can prioritize a one like order one, one, two, three, and four, so that the VMs will be backed up on that basis. Agentless VM backup for KVM hypervisors has been an important feature request from most of the partners and the clients who have been using our software. So we have added that and we have started working on this feature and it will be and we are sure that it will be released in version 5.1. And as you could see, like uh, we had this pre or post backup scripts that could be run for your um, uh, file servers. And you can even run this for your uh, AWS uh, backup jobs. Now we are going to introduce even for your um, uh, image level backups like uh, VMware, Hyper-V and all those stuffs. Okay. And active directory integration of bulk deployment and the centralized management of granular backups or i could say that these are these two are the two phases of a same coin okay so once we come up with the active directory integration of bulk deployment so that you will for a bulk uh, backup of uh, data you can just push your client agents directly through this by adding the active directory to the video backup server so that you can push your client agents as an msi um, to the targeted host okay so that with uh, with that you'll be able to manage your backup jobs that is morely towards the granular backup jobs directly from the backup server itself okay so that will be a uh, one backup server altogether and now to the live recovery to aws and azure as you could see the recovery part we had this instant boot recovery uh, instant boot live migration that we had but uh, in future, we are trying to bring up this option even for cloud so that the, whatever the data that you try to take a backup on your on-prem, you can spin that up as a virtual machine or an instance in your cloud environment. That could be done on AWS and Azure environments. Centralized management and monitoring of VDR backup servers. So this particular option, when I'm mentioning about centralized management on monitoring of VDR backup servers, I'm actually trying to bring in something called as the universal window. Okay, so when I'm saying about universal window, it's going to be the one master server that is going to control and manage all the things, all the backup servers and all the details. So that will be more of a useful to the service providers, uh, mainly who's offering the services. So uh, in this, I also have to mention something called as VDR 360. So uh, we are we have started to enhance the features that we have in VDS 360. So as of now, um, until the you know uh, we bring that effectively live on uh, uh, in version 5.1. Until then, you will have this renewal of VDS 360, which you have been using before, will be of free of cost. Okay. So that is one of the improvement. And when I'm mentioning about this, I'm sure that. It is also an hidden agenda within this particular feature. And then about the portal enhancements. So whatever the portal that you have seen uh, now, it is just um, initial enhancement that we have done. Soon we'll be doing a much of a, a larger scale of enhancement, both on the UI as well as to make it more um, useful for the customers and the partners from the end. And we have this VDA backup server cluster and load balancing, which can be done to you know uh, to group up more, more of uh, your backup servers together media backup servers together for in case of load balancing and you can cluster that up for whenever one goes one backup server goes down you can go with a uh, you can go with another okay so that is an option that we are trying to bring that directly in the ui itself then preferred networks backup is one of the important feature 
that most of the service provider has been asked uh, asking us so uh, so that the their clients or even the service providers can choose on which network they can uh, they have this backup to be transferred okay so that is the preferred network uh, networks for the backup so in order to cut short on the network trafficking and then a secondary backup copy uh, this is also a partner um, asked feature that's also an important feature where for a primary copy you will uh, primary backup data you will have two copies to be stored either um, uh, for that you can store one in your backup storage that you already have and another one you can uh, store it in a you know a different drive so that that is a secondary copy that you can have it on prem itself apart from the offsite copy that we have uh, already dealt with and more to come in version 5.0 so uh, and regarding the pricing and detail i think uh, based on the uh, request from all of you we have cut short on the pricing for um, I mean, not on uh, cut short on the pricing i'm sorry but to be actually regarding the work, pricing for the workstations now we have cut short on the um, availability uh, resource of the um, workstations where it is only limited to 10 workstations as of now even for aws you, uh, that is for 10 uh, instances and uh, your microsoft 365 and google workspace that is only for 10 users so only for 10 uh, of workstations as well as endpoints and user backups i mean instances backup and uh, uh, user account backups that's going to be uh, free okay so after that it is all cost previously it was all available for free now we have made it to be on a pricing based on the um um data and given by our partners so so far i believe that i've given you a complete introduction and uh, a future road map detail for version 5.0 5.1 as well so uh, i believe like uh, your concern account manager will be dropping you an email with all the Uh, required details once a 5.0 ga is released so they'll keep in touch with you they'll give you a complete follow up on all the details that is required with the user guide and all your uh, upgrade guide and uh, yes uh, you have the question and answer box i see that a lot of questions have been uh, answered so you can uh, keep on asking your questions uh, even after the end of the session you, you know, up to 5 minutes you will have the a Q&A session open so you can ask your questions and if the questions are not answered as of now we'll get back to you through an email and the recording of this session will be available in, uh, in another 48 hours so the, along with the recording the details will be shared to you by the account managers so yes thank you ladies and gentlemen for joining in the for this partner webinar and uh, if you have any queries related to sales uh, or pricing then you can just go uh, contact our rainbow-sales@rainbow.com or your concern account managers will keep in touch with you and yes so please stay tuned with rainbow and post after the end of the session you'll be redirected to our website page where you can see the new changes that is happening and and you can get to know what is going to come up for your version 5.0 as well so thank you so much all and thank you for staying tuned with rainbow uh hey bro uh thank for thanks for the session so everyone uh thanks for joining this session with us so yeah we are getting a lot of questions so we are answering the questions yeah if not uh Uh, today in this live uh, session so we will try to answer you immediately uh, by dropping an email so uh, account managers will get in touch with you so and they will help you with the questions okay they will respond to your questions yeah so if and, you have uh, any questions so you can just contact our account manager so they will help you maybe if you want uh, a one to one uh, session so you can just get in touch with your account manager so they will help you uh, schedule a one to one session with the uh, experts thank you thank you and have a nice day